Ariana Maddox is not only on the outs with her pump, her pump rolls cast member. She's also on the outs with her brother, Jeremy, but she just got herself a $1.6 million home. We have some cast shakeups in Potomac and in Miami, and there's just a lot that we're going to get into. So I hope you have your coffee ready. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope you had, I feel like it's been so long since we've, uh, since I've uh, talked to you guys. Um, how are you? Did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. I spent some time with my family. Um, got to see Jacques. You guys know Jacques from the Unpopular Podcast. He's actually going to be on the podcast this week, Tuesday morning. We're pre-recording, so just know ahead of time, Tuesday's episode will be pre-recorded. We're taping it on Monday night. Um, but so, oh, somebody said I'm, I'm wearing a black turtle next day, and they said it's very slimming. I have to go into Spotify today, so I wanted to, like, look profesh, so I made sure we got the... We got the um, the Steve Jobs look going on because I wanted to look sharp at Spotify today. Um, but so Jacques will be on the podcast on Tuesday. And then, boy, well, yeah, spoiler, I have a special guest from Love is Blind that's coming on the podcast on Thursday. So get ready. We have Jacques on Tuesday. We have a later airing episode of the podcast on Thursday. It'll air. It won't be streamed first thing in the morning because we're taping it live in the early afternoon. So just know Thursday's episode be forewarned. It will be streaming a little later than our normal time, but it will be live. And I will have a love is blind cast member on. Um, not sure how you're going to feel about this cast member, but it's going to be good. We're going to have a good time. So you have that to look forward to, but shall we dive into the tea? Say all the reality tea. Oh my God. There's also a project that I've been working on for almost a year now. May Yeah. Yeah, we started working on it last end of last summer that we finally are getting closer and closer to announcing. Um, we have new episodes of Disaster Daters that we're going to be taping soon. So lots of good stuff uh, in the pipeworks. I'm excited to share with you. So get ready. Um, all right, let's start with actually, let's start with the breaking news that came out this morning. Candace Dillard, Candace Dillard Bassett um, ended up. Um, announcing that she's leaving the Real Housewives of Potomac, which was interesting. It's so funny. I literally will open up my phone and it's like a million people sending me the exact same, um, <laughs> the exact same post. Um, so we have Candace and it looks like Robin is also out. The Jasmine brand is reporting that Robin will not be returning for the new season either. The timing of this is interesting. I'm not really surprised by the Robin stuff. Um, because Robin herself has not confirmed that. That's just like coming from sources that have spoken to the Jasmine brand. But Candace Dillard Bassett is announcing her own exit. She announced it in People. Um, she said, this is not farewell, but a, but a see you later. As I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years in the Real Housewives of Potomac, I'm filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey. With a whirlwind of opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I have decided to take a break from Real Housewives of Potomac. This is not a, fa a farewell, but a see you later. So she's taking a break. Um, I'm not surprised by this because I feel like with Candace, she, her music is really starting to pick up. I think of a lot of housewives that try to launch music careers. She's actually somebody that has mainstream potential with her music. She's had great music videos. Um, she's got great vocals that I think Candace has a lot of potential that she's ready to kind of move on from the show. I think even the last two seasons of the show have just been a little more lackluster. I know she was kind of upset with Robin not talking about the wand stuff and trying to hide that. She was upset with the women trying or Giselle trying to make the accusations or the insinuations, the implications that Ashley and Giselle tried to make against Chris. Um, I mean, and obviously now we have like the dick pic photos that they're going to be discussing at the reunion. So a lot of that, I think she's just like, I don't, this show is not there anymore. It's not what I need to be doing. It's not where I need to be. And she's ready to keep on going. So We'll see what happens. But the interesting thing is, and I think this was her decision, 
uh, because it's being announced before the reunion. Normally, contracts don't go out until um, after the reunion airs. They tape the reunion. We have a couple of weeks to edit. Then the reunion airs, and then usually contracts have gone out. I don't believe. I know we saw Anne Marie announce her exit from Beverly Hills last week. I don't believe the letters, the pickup letters for Beverly Hills, have gone out yet. Um, I know filming is supposed to begin again soon, and I know they were considering new new faces, but we'll see. As in new cast members, not new faces for the ladies that are currently on the show. Even though I wouldn't be surprised if some of them got some new faces in the off season. Um. Robin's also been rumored to be leaving Potomac. There's no official confirmation from her, but like I said, the Ashley brand did report that this morning right after Candace. So we'll have to wait and see. The Jasmine brand exclusively reports Robin Dixon will allegedly not be returning for the upcoming season. Network sources tell us production is shaking up the cast, trying to revive the series. I believe there was an update to this that is claiming that Robin um, may be making a couple of appearances, like cameo appearances. So we'll see. Um, we shall see what happens. Um, okay, let's move out of Potomac. I guess while we're on the topic of casting, Miami's also looking for a shakeup. Queens of Bravo was reporting that uh, production is set to begin again this fall, so they're taking a little bit of a break. And then... Um, they're going to shake things up, which is interesting as well, right? Because I feel like the Miami ladies, um, like who would we, I feel like the reunion has been so good. I know people are like, we want Kiki to be um, full time. So we have currently on the cast still, which is a lot of women. So I think, you know, as we do shake things up, it may be time to, um, maybe time to, to, I don't know, revive things a bit. So we have Adriana. I think Adriana's on the chopping block. We have Adriana. We have Lisa Hochstein. We have Larsa Pippen. I think Lisa and Larsa are shoe-ins for the new season. I think they bring that young, sexy Miami vibe. Um, they Lisa's still going to have story with Lenny. She's also, you know, we're starting to see her brattier side. So I think she could potentially become like a solid forefront villain. Larsa's just a great villain. Larsa's, you know, they're going to try to keep Lars as, as long as they can. I think she's the biggest name on the show. So I don't foresee them getting rid of Lisa or Larsa. I can see them getting rid of Gertie, to be honest with you. Even though I like Gertie and she's had such rich storyline, I can see their, them possibly demoting Gertie. Just because usually when we've seen Housewives reach that point where they have that. Well, I mean, I guess not always because you have like a Countess Luann who has really kind of had her um, growth and evolution arc. But for some reason, I just can see them not returning with Gertie. I can see them bringing Kiki into the mix. I Julia can go. Someone's like, I love Julia. Like, who, who loves Julia? Like, come on. Julia can go. You can leave, little girl. Um, Yeah, no, we don't need to keep Julia. She had a good run, and we can let her go. I see Dr. Nicole staying on. Um, possibly. I don't know. Of this cast, the only ones I really see them sticking on to our Lisa and Larsa. And I feel like that gives them enough youth. And it also gives them enough um, of like the OG throwback, right? Because Larsa is a season one OG and Lisa is a season two OG. I don't know if they're going to continue to keep Marisol. I think they're done with Adriana for sure. I don't know if they'll keep Marisol. And it would be interesting if they get rid of Alexia. I can see them possibly bringing back Alexia, but I can also see them wanting to really shake things up and chopping off Alexia the way they chopped off Vicky Gumbelson. I don't know. I I can just, I can see that. I don't see them letting go of Kiki because I just think Kiki is such a, um, she's such a strong character. She has a rich storyline that we haven't really gotten to explore much of. She's not afraid to get scrappy and in the drama. Um, and I also think she's a fan favorite right now. So, yeah, honestly, I would say the only three that I would put money on, and this is all just my own speculation, but I would say maybe Lisa, Larsa, and Kiki are the three that the that are probably shoe-ins to move forward with. The rest, I think, could be up in the air. I think definitely getting rid of Adriana, Gertie, and Julia. Um, Nicole and Alexia, I don't know. They may keep them and keep those as like their core four, Lisa, Larsa, Alexia, Nicole. And 
and I hope they upgrade Kiki and give her a mojito. But I just think it's time for a, a revamp in Miami. I can't stand Lisa and Larsa. Exactly. But they're the ones we can't stop talking about because we can't stand them. And uh, Larsa just landed House of Villains. She's doing that with Teresa. Um, I just think there's a lot more um, changing of the guard. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, they're looking to, to switch things up for sure. I don't see Larsa bouncing, to be honest with you. I think they're going to try to keep Larsa as long as they can, and Larsa's ego is not going to let her walk away from it. But we'll see what happens. There's still months until... I know that they've been casting for trying to get some new women in Miami. So they've been looking for a minute, whether or not they've found anybody that the network likes. Because casting is a whole production, right? You have to interview all these people, and then they move from the casting team to the production team, and then from the production team to the executive network team. And the network is the one that decides, you know, who they want to move forward with. It's not necessarily the casting team. The casting team is just the one that's scouting people and pitching them to the network. So we'll see. Adriana can go. Yeah, Adriana can go. I think her her sticks and her tricks and her, you know, pulling a coochie, put it, pulling a cat out of her coochie. Like, we're tired of the stunts at this point. I'm ready to move on from it. Um, but that's Potomac. That's Miami. Let's dive into Vanderpump Rules because that is whew, wild, wild, wild. But I did just want to remind everybody there are six episodes of Disaster Daters. Our first, I guess, our first official season now that we've, uh, we're moving forward and taping new episodes. Um, first six episodes of Disaster Daters are out now. It's me and my friend Jeff. We host the show. We dive into love, sex, dating, relationships. You can listen to it on all podcast platforms, or you can watch it exclusively on Spotify. We've had some great guests on. We break down some of your disaster data stories that you've sent in, so get ready, because we will put out an open call for some new stories when we get back into the studio. Um, and we already have a, pl a plethora of new stories that we're going to share ourselves. So get ready for that. Um, but catch disaster daters, disaster daters, um available on all podcast platforms it's me and jeff live life we put our life on display and it's wild and raunchy and crazy and naughty and it's not safe for work i'll tell you that so be sure to check out disaster daters like i said you can watch it exclusively on spotify or you can listen on all podcast platforms okay that said let's move over to vanderpump rules so ariana maddox Page six is reporting exclusively that Ariana Maddox, dun dun dun, dun oh, nope, <laughs> sorry, um, dun dun dun, dun has purchased a new home, one point six million dollars, one point six mil, um, in the Hollywood Hills, so it's not in the Valley. Well, no, I guess that's not really considered the Valley. It's considered the Hollywood Hills. This is like where Lauren Conrad lived. Remember when they did the Holly, the the Hills on MTV? Um, so it it's a great looking house. I mean, it looks like you know, definitely cost her a pretty penny. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, large backyard, great view. I don't know. I'm actually I'm here for it. I'm happy for Ariana. It's a it's a gorgeous home, newly renovated. Um, just purchased it. I did hear though. So page six got the exclusive, but I'm hearing that um, I think Backgrid was the one that got the photos and they were the ones that were trying to shop it around to um, shop it around to the different uh, networks or not different networks, different news outlets. And apparently Ariana's team didn't want this out there. Like they, because obviously they're still trying to fight with Tom Sandoval or not trying to fight with Tom Sandoval, but they're trying to settle things with Tom Sandoval in court because um, they want the house to be sold. That way they can divide the value of the house and you know move forward with the sale of the house that she currently owns with Tom. And so I guess because of that and because it is like a, you know, a story that's playing out on the show. I don't know all the details. I just know her team was not keen on this getting out there. Somehow it leaked, I believe, because somehow Backrid was able to get photos of it. And then, you know, Page Six ended up running with it. I don't know if who the sources were that Page Six spoke to. It kind of sounds like, based off of their quotes, it sounds like it was maybe the realtor or the person that, that um, made the sale only because... Um, just the quotes were very specific to the style of the house and the renovation of the house. And, um, you know, Ariana's very excited. Like, it just felt like, you know, real estate agent with the keys handy being like, ooh, yeah, Ariana just bought a new house. Here's the scoop, you know. 
but it was an anonymous source. So that was the other part that was kind of confusing. Um, and like I said, from what I have heard, her team didn't want this out there because I don't think it helps, you know, with her still living with Tom narrative. And I don't know if that's something legally that they're trying to, you know, protect or what, but I guess because the argument could be made, you know, the reason they're trying to sell the house immediately is because maybe the situation is just not healthy for her mental health. And so they want to push the sale a lot sooner. But now it's like, if it comes out that she has another house and she can very easily go live in that other house because she purchased the home, then, you know, it's like, well, then what really is the rush? Like we should be able to settle this, you know, but good for her. Again, that's all speculation of just what I'm trying to put the pieces together of what's happening. Um, yeah. So we also have in Vanderpump land, we also have Ariana's brother, Jeremy. And well, we know that, that Ariana's on the outs with the cast, right? Cause after the reunion, she got into a blow up with Lala Kent. Lala has been going around. I think she was just on Jeff Lewis and she was talking about how she's like, listen, I had empathy for Ariana. Like I was in a situation with a guy who I was going to marry that I had a kid with and he was betraying me and all of this stuff. Right. And Lala's kind of getting into, you know, how she felt about Randall and how it relates to how Ariana feels about Tom. And she's just like, it's just really weird because she's saying that like, she's like, when I broke up with Randall, I picked up and I left the next morning. She's like, I did not stay another, you know, night with him. I was gone. I was done you know, when she found out about him cheating on her. So she's like, I just don't understand why she's still living there. And then, you know, her ego has gotten really big. And so Lala's like, I just, I had questions about how Ariana was handling. I was always team Ariana, but like I started to have questions about some of her choices and why she was still staying tied to Tom Sandoval. And, you know, she has a new boyfriend and Lala just questioned a lot of it. Cause she's like, I was not, she's like, I have not started dating anybody new. I am not still living with Randall. She's like, I'm, you know, in a very different headspace that I didn't, I, she was questioning some of Ariana's decisions. Um, and it seems like they're definitely not in a good place. And I think Lala really lays that all out there. And Ariana probably tries to come back at Lala, but you know, I think Lala, I don't know. I just think that, um, and then you also hear like Katie's comments about how this reunion was so different from anything we've ever had before. It wasn't as dramatic as last time, but it was emotional. So I'm thinking maybe the entire cast just completely turns on Ariana by the end of the reunion. And that's why Katie was just like, so like, you know, taken back by the audacity of everybody to turn on Ariana, especially, and that's why she says it's so different from last season's reunion. I don't know. I haven't gotten any reunion scoop aside from the Ariana Lala stuff, but I also haven't asked or dug into anything either. But yeah. Oof. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wild. Uh, we'll see what happens, but it doesn't seem like she's close with Sheena right now. Doesn't seem like she's, she's definitely not close with Lala right now. Lala said that their beef at the reunion was relationship ending. She's not talking to, to either of the Toms. It seems like the only person Ariana has in her court that's still on this cast is Katie. And I don't know if that's a strong ally. So I don't know what that means for them moving forward on the show, Katie and Ariana. Uh, I could also see maybe them shaking things up, moving some of the cast members over to the Valley, putting all the eggs in the Valley basket and revamping Vanderpump Rules. Similar to like what they wanted to do with Roni. Remember, they're like, we're going to reboot Roni. And we're going to have a Roni legacy option before it became ultimate girls trip. And I, I can see them doing that with Vanderpump, you know, move everything over to the Valley. Um, and then, cause we now have Lala and Sheena that have purchased homes in the Valley. Ariana purchased home in, in the Hollywood Hills. Um, I don't think Ariana would join the Valley though, nor do I think Katie would join the Valley. Um, but I could see Sandoval, Sheena and Lala joining the Valley for sure. Especially now that like we see Sandoval like in good graces with everybody again. Okay. Fucking weird. We literally just saw Tom Sandoval and Jax Taylor at Jax's in Studio City, his, his sports bar, doing a rendition of, um, was it Backstreet Boys or, or, or NSYNC? I don't want to be a fool in this game for two. Du, nu, 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 nu. Is that bye, bye, bye? What is that? Oh my God, it's been so long. And they all kind of like remind me of the same thing. Um, 
I don't want to be a fool in this game for two. Do, no, 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 no. Oh, it was bye bye. Okay. Bye 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 bye. Do, no, 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 no. Okay. Somebody is saying Backstreet Boys, but somebody else said bye bye bye. Okay. So which one is it? Because bye 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 is not by Backstreet Boys. It's by NSYNC. Guys, this is when I need you. It's when my brain's not thinking. I don't want to be a fool in this game for two. Do, 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 mm, 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 mm. Um, but we also see James lives in the valley now. He lives by Burbank, uh, by the Burbank airport. So, yeah, I can see them shifting over Backstreet Boys. It was, I want it that. Okay, there we go, Leisha. It was, it was not bye, bye, bye. It's not, no, guys. Wait, which one is it? Is it? No, I think it's I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. I think that's the correct answer. It's not Bye Bye Bye. Um, it's not in sync. I don't want to be a fool in this game for two. Okay, we're going to Google this because you guys are giving me, uh, I don't want to be a fool in this game for two. It's Bye 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 by in sync. Okay, the Google just confirmed it. The Google confirmed it was Bye Bye Bye. So Jax... And Sandoval. And then there was this other dude. And I'm like, who's this random dude? He had a hat on. And I was like, is that supposed to be Schwartz? What it, What in the Kate Middleton is going on? Who is this other person that is pretending to be Tom Schwartz? Because nobody should be part of this trio unless it's Tom Schwartz. And if he's, if we're trying to be, con if the royal family is trying to convince us that that's Tom Schwartz. <laughs> and don't give me your fucking bullshit, okay? About like, oh, don't be me. Don't talk about Kate Middleton. She has can't. I didn't give her cancer. Okay. This is this is what we do. These are our jobs. My heart goes out to her. My heart goes out to her children. I'm very sad that she has cancer. But come on, we can make a joke about how the royal family fucked up that whole entire media debacle. Okay, they were putting out Photoshop photos. They were putting out fake Kate Middletons all over the the, the barns. So yeah. I can make a joke about the way the royal family handled it, the way the press secretary at the royal family handled that, because they did not. Ryan Bailey tweeted, and he's like, well, I'm glad the royal family got ahead of this before things really got crazy. And I was like, exactly. What kind of cancer? We don't know what kind of cancer Kate Middleton has. She didn't really tell us that. And now everyone's dissecting the video, and they're like, this is AI, and this isn't real. And look at the look at the bench, and the bench changes. It's like an optical illusion, and then her ring is there, and then her ring disappears. I don't know, okay? I just know... I made a joke on Instagram too. What did I say? And people were getting mad at me. And I'm like, shut up. Um, I feel for her. I feel for her. Okay. My heart goes out to Kate for the, ca the cancer story. I don't want to call her Brooks because there are parts of the cancer story that I have questions about. But listen, love and healing to her. She said that she came out with the video finally. And she said that uh, she did have abdominal surgery back in January and they removed something. And at first they didn't think that it was cancerous. And then after they removed it, then they realized that there was cancer. And so now she's in early, early stages of chemo. Um, but we don't know what type of cancer she has. We don't know the details other than she's come out and says that she now has cancer. And I'm not questioning her. I do have questions, but I'm not questioning I would assume it's stomach cancer, Nikki. Uh, but I mean, it could also be colon cancer. We're not entirely sure. We didn't get that information. But so I, when it finally came out, I said, oh my God, so many accounts on the internet today are posting and saying, whoopsie, sorry, we all thought that Kate Middleton was locked in a basement with stunt doubles covering up for an affair her husband was having with her BFF, XOXO Gossip Girl. Because like everybody was acting like they were XOXO Gossip Girl. And everyone's like, I have sources and I have this. And yes, I know I also contributed to that. Because everyone's like, well, you were saying that she had bulimia. And I was like, actually, I said that that was a theory. And that theory happened to check out. It was the most logical theory with the information that we had at the time. Okay? And I stand by that. At the time, with the information that we had, you know, Stacy says the exact same thing happened to my sister. For her, it was colon cancer. She had surgery first and then chemo after to be safe. Okay, so then that makes sense, right? You have the surgery, you remove the cancer, and then you have preventative chemo. I know. I mean, I've openly spoken about my father's um, myeloma diagnosis, which is a um, it's cancer cells in the blood plasma. And so, you know, that's been an ongoing journey, and he's been you know, doing the chemo and doing stem cell therapy or stem cell transplants rather. And so I'm, you know, learning a lot about it as well. Listen, I'm not, I don't, I'm not coming for Kate Middleton. 
I'm coming for the royal family and their press house and how they handled that situation because they really made a real hot mess out of it. But yeah, I hope it's not stomach ca stomach cancer because that's very aggressive. I, I, but see, here's the other thing. We're still speculating because we still don't have answers. And that's what we do. We have questions about public figures that their lives are out there. You know, Megan and Harry are like, we don't want to be a part of this. We're going to peace out and become celebrities in Hollywood and have the paparazzi photographs, photograph us over here. But we want a private life, you know. So, yeah, but here's the thing. You shut down the rumors by addressing it head on. The royal family did not address this head on. They allowed this to go on. They allowed everybody with the podcast microphone to talk about whether or not there was an affair or bulimia or whatever it was. And we were all speculating on it. I was like, listen, I didn't do anything different with Kate Middleton's situation that I haven't done with Ariana Maddox buying a house or Tom Sandoval fucking Raquel. We talk about these things. We discuss them. We explore the theories. We look at both sides of the coin. That's what it is. Okay. So yeah, the royal family blew it from the jump. They put out the Photoshop photo and then they're like, oops, we're Kate Middleton and we're just, you know, playing with Canva because we're an amateur photographer. And I was like, what the fuck? And then they put out the fake Kate Middletons that were all over the place. Like she was a little Oompa Loompa that they were cloning all around. Sorry for my rant and my tangent, but it was just like so many people were like up in arms about it over the weekend. And I'm like, guys, can you chill? Like, God. Dude, don't apologize for you. I'm not. I'm not. A, that's, that's my thing. I came on my platform to say, I am not apologizing. I feel badly that she was diagnosed with cancer. My heart goes out to her. I send love. I send all the healing energy. As someone whose father currently has cancer, an incurable kind of cancer, it's in his blood plasma. You can't cut that out. I have deep empathy for that. However... I'm not going to apologize for doing my job. Um, so there you go. You can't apologize for being an investigative journalist. I'm not an investigative journalist, but yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so we had Jax doing uh, Bye 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 with Tom Sandoval and this Kate Middleton, Tom Schwartz at Jax's. And it was cringy and it was weird, but I was also like low key kind of living for it. Like, it's like when your dad gets drunk and him and his buddies like go up after pounding a few beers and then they think that they're cool. Um, I was just surprised that they had dance moves and they remembered all the lyrics to Bye Bye Bye. Uh, I was impressed. I was like, wow, Jax put his brain to good use, you know? So that was interesting. But so anyway, the reason I bring this all up, sorry, we went on a tangent and we're on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Welcome to No Filter with Zach Peter. Um, Jeremy, Ariana's brother, was also seen and was hugging Tom Sandra. Oh, we actually I have a photo of it if you're watching this on Spotify or on the YouTube. Um, this account. Let's see, what was the name of the account so I can shout them out? Or I guess it came from, this was posted on Reddit. Um, in the Vanderpump Rules Reddit thread, someone posted about Vanderpump Rules, what is, oh, Vanderpump Rules Party shared this video. And it was a video with a, this photo of Tom Sandoval and Jeremy Maddox, Ariana's brother, hugging. And they were laughing together. And then... Jeremy went on to, um, or he didn't go on to, but it looks like um, there was a clip from the Pump Rules podcast on Apple Podcasts. They, I guess, had their recorder with them and went up to Jeremy and were asking him about it. Uh, and they're like, wait, did we just see you laughing with Tom Sandoval? And then Jeremy was started speaking out and he's like, listen, I guess we're going to have to find out all of that in season 12. So he, we don't know if there is a season 12 or not, or what they're going to do with the show necessarily. I wouldn't be surprised. The ratings are still good and still solid that I would not be surprised if they come back for a season 12. And maybe that's how they get Ariana to come back for season 12 because Jeremy will be on it, you know, or maybe that'll really get her to run in the opposite direction. But he's claiming he hasn't heard from her in months. He's like, listen, in terms of me, you know, being cool with Tom Sandoval or me hugging Tom Sandoval, or whatever, he's like, I'm going to plead the fifth. And as of right now, I will stay pleading the fifth. That will be my stance, depending on how long it takes to hear from my sister. And he goes on to say that he hasn't heard from Ariana in months. But he's like, listen, there was a lot that was unsaid between him and Tom Sandoval. 
that I guess he's interested in discussing with Tom Sandoval. It doesn't seem like they've talked, but I guess in running into each other, you know, he says that losing Tom, he lost a friend, right? That there's a mutual love that they have for each other. He's lived with Tom and Ariana. Like, and listen, Tom's been in his life for nine years longer, right? Or, well, I don't know exactly when Jeremy met Sandoval, but I know, you know, he lived with them. He knows them very well. So it seems like Tom was kind of like a brother-in-law to Jeremy. He's like, listen, my, my side will always be with my sister. I'm always going to align with my sister. However, um, it seems like his sister kind of ghosted him or she's just like living her own life and can't be bothered by him. That's kind of the sentiment that he was giving because he said, again, he has not heard from her in months. So, but like I said, after the reunion, it doesn't seem like anybody's really talking to her aside from Katie. And then I know there's stuff about something about her. I have some tea on something about her that I will be discussing with Jacques on Tuesday's episode because it just came out that something about her is now going to be like an Uber Eats licensing deal. So basically their recipes will be outsourced throughout the country to different kitchens throughout the U.S., where you can order, like, let's just say they have a BLT sandwich or a Greek, I think they did have a Greek goddess sandwich. So they'll have a Greek goddess sandwich. And then that, um, that recipe will be uh, provided to different kitchens throughout the US. And so depending on how close you are, you can order that Greek god that something about her Greek goddess sandwich. So they won't have actual something about her pop ups necessarily. But there will be kitchens that will be um, cooking those. And there are a lot of those. I know we have a few of those kitchens here where it's like four different restaurants that technically operate out of one kitchen. You can't really go and eat there, but it's a, uh, it's a kitchen for, uh, Uber eats, Postmates, whatever, you know, where they have four different types of food, but it's all being cooked out of the same kitchen. You can order it from the app and it gets delivered straight out of that kitchen, it's a kitchen dedicated solely for these licensing types of deals. Um, we did have one here in downtown. I think it closed though, which made me sad. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of what's going to happen with something about her. But there's more about that that we'll talk about because Jacques and I got some some scoop on on what's really going on with something about her and why it hasn't opened yet. So get ready. Remind. Well, I was going to say remind me, but it's tomorrow's show is not going to be live. We're pre-taping it tonight. Um, you can DM me. To, well, no, it's in my notes for to discuss with Jacques. So never mind. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on in Vanderpump land. Let's talk John Jansen, Shannon Bedore. So it was revealed over the weekend, um, that John Jansen is suing Shannon Bedore for $75,000 because he says that he gave her a loan. I believe it was back in 2022. Um, a loan for a facelift. He said, hey, can you give me some money? He gave her some money. He's like, here you go, honey. Go go get your nails done. Go get your face done. And so she went and she got her nails done. And she got her face done. And now he's like, okay, money by Monday, Randall. Pay up. Let's go. And she's like, what? So apparently ha like, there was a chunk of that that was for the facelift. And then there was another like 40,000-ish, give or take, chunk that was for something else that undisclosed, right? Um, but that's a lot of money, $75,000. Well, he's also suing for attorney's fees and costs, and he's also suing for interest on this loan. Now, I don't know if they have an actual loan agreement. Um, that's what people are saying, like, show us the show us the loan agreement. Shannon's rep has come out, and they said that they were discussing this with Tom, or sorry, they were discussing this with John Jansen internally like they were trying to settle this and resolve this but i believe they wanted him to sign a non-disparagement agreement where he would they would essentially agree to not talk about each other publicly or in the press right probably in an attempt to prevent him from speaking about her on the show because now alexis has rejoined the show i would presume but they're claiming that because he he refused to sign the non-disparagement agreement, that that's why he's decided to move forward with this lawsuit because they couldn't come to that sort of agreement. Shannon, I'm assuming, never wanted this information out there. We'll say. We'll see. But, I mean, he's like, listen, that face that you got, that's a loner face. That's not a keeper, okay? It was a loner, 
And so you either give me back the face or you pay up. And obviously she can't give him back the face, but she looks good. I'm like, oh, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's $75,000 for a facelift, which obviously is a joke because not the full 75,000 was for the facelift. Only a portion of that was spent on the actual face. But even then, that was still a really expensive facelift. She looks good though. He's like, listen, if I don't get to enjoy that new face, then you better pay me for it, bitch. And she's like, what? He's like, money by Monday, Randall. He's like, I need to buy Alexis an engagement ring. No more promise rings. I'm going to get her an engagement ring. So give me that 75K, right? That face is going to pay for Alexis's bling bling ring. Oof. Hi, Pamela. Welcome on into the live chat for the first time. Um, Kat says, good. He's allowed to talk about her in public. I'm so glad he put this out. She's embarrassed now. Shannon is a nightmare and you know it. She's the worst. Oh my God. She's the worst mom and all she does is cry. She, Kat, who, who pissed in your Cheerios this morning? <laughs> she's like, she's a bad mom. Hoof. My goodness. Um, Zach, why does Shannon have no money that she has to borrow? I don't know, Steve. I'm I'm not Shannon's um not Shannon's uh financial bookkeeper. Um but the interesting thing too is Shannon would always talk about how she um she would pay for everything when it came to John. I mean, here's the thing, you could also have be struggling financially and John Jansen could be doing fine financially, but you could also be the one that's paying for everything, right? You're the one that's always paying for dinner if you guys are going out or paying for drinks or whatever. Like I can see Shannon just being that girl that's like, I'll cover it, I'll pay for it, I'll pay for it, I'll pay for it, you know? Um, I I don't know. Um, but he gave her that money. We don't know what the agreement was that between them. We don't know if he gave her that money or didn't. Get, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in their relationship. But that's where we're at. She's like, she claims that it was, he's doing this because he didn't want to send the non-disparagement. So, yeah, that's where we're at. That was, wow, we covered a lot today. We covered the Potomac news. We covered the Miami news. We covered Ariana. We covered the house. We covered John Jansen and Shannon's loner face. Um, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I guess tomorrow. So in my notes for us to discuss, Jacques and I are going to give you the tea on something about her. We're going to talk about Kate Gate, even though I kind of went on my own little tangent about that. Oh, we covered that today, too. Wow, we covered a lot. Um, And we're not even at 45 minutes. Uh, We're going to talk about the Kate Gate because he'll give his thoughts on it. We're going to talk about Erica Jane. Shout out to Christopher because Christopher loves when we talk about Erica Jane. Um. Rena announcing that she's not coming back to Housewives, and then we'll give some of our predictions for the Beverly Hills Housewives. So that's what you can look forward to on. Um, that's what you can look forward to on uh, tomorrow, Tuesday's episode of the podcast. Jock Peterson from the Unpopular Podcast. He's also a uh, reporter for the Daily Mail, formerly in Australia. He's now here in Los Angeles. So you'll probably see us collaborating a lot more now that we don't have to deal with like the global time difference. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. You can always give me a follow at Just Plain Zach to keep up with me all over the internet, or you can follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. Did it cover Potomac fashion? Oh, no, I didn't. It looked great, though, JB. They're, the reunion looks looked incredible. There was too much other news. Listen, we only cover the fashion looks when there's not a ton of news, and we need filler content. So, um, No, Tom did not buy out Ariana. Um, she, I guess, used her Chicago money to go and get herself a new house. Go for her. Um, all right. That said, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Follow me at Justin Zach. Be sure to catch Disaster Daters available on all podcast platforms or watch it exclusively on Spotify. I have to run to Spotify right now, actually. Um, but yeah, have a great rest of your day. Talk to you on Tuesday. We have Jacques. We have Love is Blind cast member on Thursday. Get ready. Be sure to subscribe and leave me a nice Apple podcast review. Give me those reviews, baby. Let's get it. Okay. Hey, bye. Love you, mean it. Bye.